Hey, I'm Joey. And I'm Dana. And I'm Jesse, the big sister. Welcome to Car Chats. In today's episode, we'll be discussing our experiences as single people in different stages of our lives. We'll also talk about the ways that singleness is often viewed and experienced in Christian spaces. Let's start with an overview of our singleness. I'll start because I have the least amount of singleness and therefore the least amount to say. Unfortunately, I was in a closeted relationship for almost five years in which I was presenting to the world as single, but was very much not a single person. There's a lot more to unpack there, but that's a conversation for another day. I did have a full year of singleness just this past year, and it was so good, and I'll share more about that later. I only recently turned in my singleness membership card. For all but six months of my adult life, I have been single. Not only was I never in a relationship, I also never dated. I was asked out a couple of times, but was never interested. I feel like so much of who I am is because of spending most of my life single. It's been a very formative part of my identity. And I still have my singleness card. I've been single my whole life, gone on a couple dates, but I've never been in a relationship. Now let's give some broader context to our experience of singleness. While the average age for marrying in the U.S. is trending upward, it's extremely common in Christian circles to marry young. This often creates pressure and challenges for single people in the church. We've observed that in Christian circles, marriage appears to be more highly valued and the thing that everyone should aspire to. Some of the challenges I've experienced come from the ways that we talk about singleness in marriage. Especially once you're out of high school, people will ask if you're in a relationship or if you've met anyone. This is not inherently a bad thing to ask about. However, the way that people respond suggests that dating is the ideal. For example, people say things like, don't worry, there's still plenty of time or there's someone out there for you. These messages clearly tell us that being single is a sad, negative, or undesirable thing. Singleness should absolutely be as temporary as possible. Being single can make it somewhat difficult to fit in in different situations, including at church. In my experience, many young people church hop or attend churches infrequently until they get married. At that time, they may settle at one church. What this can mean for single people is that they may be one of the only unpartnered people in a community. Again, this isn't inherently a bad thing, but without intentional inclusive efforts, it can create feelings of unbelonging. I was in a small group of great people, but they were all slightly older than me and were married. So it made it difficult sometimes to participate in conversations about their kids, their marriages, how they met, and generally about their experience being a couple. A funny example of the pressure to be dating in the church is that any time one of us were to bring a male friend or even family member, other people from church would ask us or our parents if we were dating them. Did you bring someone special today? And they would be very excited until we told them, no, that was not our date. That was our cousin. (laughs) There seems to be a misconception about singleness, which is that you're not a full adult when you're single. Your life should progress in this order. Singleness, casual dating, serious dating, and marriage. These relationship statuses are basically viewed as levels up in adulthood. Our society struggles to see single people as their own full-grown adults. Because this is such a common and embedded belief in our society, Um, We internalize it, too, to some degree. When people, especially in the past, would ask me about dating, it could cause me to feel embarrassed, even though I enjoy being single most of the time. Fortunately, I'm at a point now where I don't care. Woo! Just as marriage has many difficulties, being single has some difficulties, too. One of these challenges is experiencing times where you feel lonely. This is partly due to the pressure to date or marry. Also, because people who are dating or married often hang out together, This can leave people who are single feeling left out. That's so true. And I can speak for both Jesse and I that something that was extremely helpful was that we both had good supportive groups of friends, many of whom were also single. That normalization of singleness did help us to have good community. But at the same time, I can definitely also say that there were times 
I questioned and thought that maybe there was something about me that made me a little bit less desirable since I wasn't being pursued romantically. You can get to an unhealthy place of attributing your singleness to something internal, which causes a lot of self-doubt and negative self-talk. We know that for some people, especially women, this can even lead to feelings of failure. There is a lot of societal pressure to partner and there's a lot of pressure to marry and have children. All of us have had friends who have experienced direct pressure from close relatives or other friends in regards to marrying or having kids. That can cause a lot of undue stress. So now that we've talked about some of the challenges of being single, we're going to talk about some of the joys of being single, and there are many. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to report that I've greatly enjoyed life as a single person. I've had so much more time and energy to pour into other relationships, like with my family, my friends, and my students and their families. Similarly, I have the time and energy to put into valuable work and times of volunteering that people in relationships might not have as much time to do. So being single affords lots of amazing opportunities. Try it now, for free. <laughs> now over to Dana. I loved being single. I am really grateful that I did not spend time dating when I was young and still maturing and developing my own thoughts, perspectives, and opinions. It's hard for me to imagine dating at a younger age when I still did not know myself very well. I'm really grateful that I was able to invest in sports, school, friendships, and other learning and growth opportunities during my high school and college years. I can't talk about the healthy, grounded person that I am today without giving a huge shout out to singleness. And now, over to Joey. My recent year of singleness was very important for me. After being in relationships for most of my adult life, being single was a crucial reminder to me that we need to know ourselves as individuals and at a very deep level. I was able to take time to heal and recenter myself and my priorities. I did a lot of self-reflection, learning, and growing. It was truly a delightful time, and I believe it helped me reach a much more holistically healthy state of being. Lastly, we'll share some suggestions that we have for including and valuing single people in our communities. We can start with the language we use and what we normalize in our conversations and stories. We can point out the spiritual and other benefits of being single as well as being married. Instead of being taught to pray for our future spouse, we can pray for future communities. We can normalize the experience of people living in community, whether single or married. Church leaders can use examples of deep, loving, sacrificial friendships, as well as marriages. Here's another thought. Along with asking people about their marriages or relationships, we can ask other people about their other important relationships, like friendships, family relationships, and communities. And when someone answers that they are not dating or married, we can respond in a way that does not suggest that dating or marriage are the inevitable or the right outcomes. Instead of saying, you'll find someone, or even enjoy this time of singleness, we can instead respond by just asking about those other meaningful relationships. Let's avoid phrases that assume people are going to get married, like when you start dating, or when you get married, or your future spouse. Let's also avoid things like your better half, which indicates that single people are a worse half. Or other half, which in assumes that you're half a person until you start dating or get married. We're all whole people, y'all. <laughs> we can help single people to build community. One way to do this in the church and other community spaces is by having groups that are intergenerational so that there are people at multiple stages of life and relationship. This way, we're all learning from one another's experiences and not making anyone feel that they're left out of the norm. This is a benefit for everyone. In summary, singleness is awesome. Even though our society and culture try to minimize the value of singleness, it is an invaluable and beautiful way of existing in our world. And on that note, buckle up. See you later. Bye, everyone. Here's Shorty. <laughs> we'll be discussing. Oops. <laughs> we'll be discussing. Ah! <laughs> this often creates pressure and.
I'm saying the least. <laughs> You don't have to whisper, it's okay. I look down. It's not like that I'm good at this good. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> That's not right. Sorry, what am I to say? We can cut that part. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you looked, looked over, over your glasses. <laughs> oh <Sorry>. my hip <laughs> cramped. Huh? <laughs> Knowing people. What? Lol. Or, or even. <laughs> or, or. Or, or. Uh -huh.